So good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Amir Elichai, the CEO and the founder of Reporty Homeland Security. Thank you for having me today. We founded the company three years ago in order to change the way that people interact with authorities in emergency and non-emergency event. And it's all started from my personal experience when I've been robbed in the Israeli beach and I tried to call the police and the dispatcher started to ask me, what's my name, where am I, what I'm seeing, and if I can deliver information about the current event. I thought to myself, how come that still in the 21st century, I need to supply so much information for the dispatcher in order to get a decision? And how come that when I'm ordering pizza or calling Uber, they know exactly where I am? And when I'm calling to those essential services, they, know, they don't know anything about the current situation. If we will talk about the facts, every minute all around the world, there are millions of calls that are being made to different dispatch centers. While every duration of call is between two to three and a half minutes, and the reason is the dispatcher is trying to understand whether or not the person is speaking the truth, what's going on in the arena, and if they need to send some uh, uh, forces to help to this person. But even with this long duration, the amount of false reports that our uh, entities that we are working with reported is between 25 to 35 percent. First problem, they are trying to understand whether or not the person is speaking the truth, what's going on in the arena, and if they need to send some uh, uh, forces to help to this person. Another problem is to find the person who is reporting in real time, especially in the indoor spaces where there is uh, not GPS working. I was with um, former Prime Minister Raoul Barak, who is one of our investors, at the Bataclan uh, event two weeks after it happened, and we investigated and we sat with some of the police departments in Paris. They told us that they received 150 calls from the Bataclan Theater and they couldn't understand what's going on. They told us if we had the ability to understand what's going on in the theater in real time, the reaction was totally different. It took them 41 minutes to arrive to the scene just because of the fact that they couldn't understand what's going on inside. Another problem with, with the, those uh, um, command and control centers that they are working in a FIFO method means that first in, first out. They don't have any ability to prioritize call. You will wait on the line even if your call is much urgent than other uh, reports. If we will take those three uh, samples that happened here in France, they all have one thing in common. In all those events, there are min many people or in the hyper or in the Bataclan events or around those specific areas that try to report to the police department, that try to deliver information. But calling 112 and try to deliver information where there is a lot of people that are trying to call, the network is very loud, and try to deliver information was very inefficient, which caused, at the end of the day, a lot of damages and human casualties. We all remember this, uh, this, this video. Wait a second. No. Oh, you can't you can really see it now because it's connected to the YouTube anyway. We all remember this YouTube where people were around the Bataclan and trying to, and trying to report, no, not this one, so, not, not, this, not the right video. Yeah, this is, leave it like this. We all remember this video where people were around the Bataclan and trying to report and trying to deliver information about the case that happened at the Bataclan. Think about the fact that the authorities would be able to receive that information even from the theater and understand what's going on. They thought that it's going to be a negotiation pro process and they couldn't understand there is a mass killing event. Now we're going to show you a movie that describes what Report is doing and what we uh, successfully implemented in more than 30 countries worldwide. And then we will elaborate a little bit about the technologies that we have in our company. Now you can play the movie, please. There is uh, no sound. Uh, there is no sound for uh, for the movie. Okay, I will try to talk while the movie is uh, playing because you are not uh, you cannot hear the voice. I think it's better to stop the movie and I and I will talk about the technologies. Okay. What we basically try to demonstrate at the beginning is what happening at the current situation where people are trying to call to the police department and what you are going to see now is our system in, was it activated. 
So we demonstrated a car accident and there is a person who is standing with his device like you can see here. All what you need to do is to click a one button, the system will recognize where you are and will transfer the information to the local first responders who will be able to see exactly where you are. It will be able to see a real streaming video from the scene to prioritize the event, to see the exact location even in the indoor space within one meter accuracy. If the person have any kind of speech disorder, he will be able to ch uh, the dispatcher will be able to chat with him. All the calls will be integrated to the local command and control center, and in the end of the day, it will save lives. Once you are reporting to the command and control centers, the system also delivering information to your close friends, and it's encouraging the community and better uh, security for uh, for the people who is reporting. Okay, so what we have, um, first thing that we have, we have a mobile application, which basically it's now existing in more than 160 countries worldwide, that gives you the ability to click one button and to stream real-time video peer-to-peer -peer encrypted, inclu including both side communication or through the UMTS tower or through the IP channel, including your exact location, even in the indoor space within one meter accuracy, including floor number and apartment number in case you have any kind of uh, speech disorder, so the system will recognize that and will deliver the fact that you can't speak and the dispatcher will be able to chat with you. In addition to that, we have a lot of social features that basically encouraging people to use our solution because we believe that if you are not using something in your daily life, you won't be able to remember to use it in case of emergency. In addition to that, the application, we have other applications for the dispatch uh, centers. What you can see here is the C2I, which is Command, Control and Intelligence, that the first time in the human history, dispatchers or police departments can see waiting calls. They can see the waiting calls, they can prioritize them according to the severity of the event. They can see all of them in, in a live map, okay, where they are um, showing here uh, in, um, with a call log that you can see exactly which kind of calls you have. You can see the video, you can understand the severity, and you can send forces according to the severity of the different events. We have the call taker platform, that's basically every uh, command and cont control center have to have those kind of solutions. The, the take caller is sitting in, uh, in front of this screen, can see the event, think about the Bataclan event, they had 150 calls. Just one video from the theater would be much better than all the hundreds of calls that was being made what, without any kind of information. In addition to that, we have an API that basically gives any authority the ability to integrate our solution as an another layer to an existing platforms. This screen is a real screenshot from the Israeli national EMS from MADA that's basically nationwide connected to reporting solution and saving life on a daily basis. And what you can see here, it's how it's appear on their screen with our APIs integrated to, our solu to their solutions. In addition to that, we have a telco SDK integration, means that we are connected to national telco providers that instead of downloading the, downloading the app, once you initiate a 112 call, it will immediately deliver all the information totally transparent to the user, even without downloading an application to your phone. We have an advanced indoor positioning system, as I described before, which is very essential and important tool for emergency services. 80% of the calls in these days are coming from those devices. And when we are spending 80% of our time in the indoor spaces, the accuracy of the report is not good at all. So our solution can, in real time, deliver exact location, even with floor number and apartment number, to the relevant dispatch center. And we are doing it automatically without beacons, without hardware, without nothing, just with the power of the crowd. Here we, we try to demonstrate one case that we did in one of the cities in Israel, which is uh, half of the size of Nice, okay, the city of uh, Rehovot. In one month, there was 6,540 uh, reports from uh, Rehovot to uh, different uh, entities for the city services and for the national EMS. And you can see how reporting cut dramatically the, the time that takes the dispatcher to understand what's going on in the event if people are using reporting comparing to regular calls. So you can see that we cut the time by more than 50% while re reports coming from the reporting platform. And if talking about saving lives, about essential um, cases, this unique um, uh, parameter is very, very important. 
What next? Report is getting into a few other industries. In these days, reported that 1.3 million people are dying every year in car accident. And the, one of the reasons there is a very slow response to those car accidents, and if there, are, there is any kind of ability to, to receive in real time what's happening in this car accident, the, the response will, will be much more efficient. So, as you all know, the eco standard is getting into Europe, and by 2000, uh, 2018, every car has to be with an automatic button that will stream information in case of car, uh, of car accidents. So, report is getting also into this industry, and all in, in these days, you can see our solution implemented to the head units of different cars, which can be activated or manually or automatically when there is a car accident happen. It will deliver video in case there is a camera in the, in the, in the car. It will deliver your exact location and the responder will talk with you through the voice system of your car without you doing anything to activate this solution. In addition to that, there is now in these days 400 million uh, devices that are now connected to the internet and I'm not talking about mobile devices and reporting also getting into those uh, unique solutions. It can be watches, it can be bracelets, it can be any kind of, inf uh, of device that can basically deliver information to the dispatch center and think about the fact that I'm an old person and I'm having an heart attack and my phone is not with me and I'm clicking one button on my watch and it will deliver all the information to my friends and to the first responders that will come to help me if I don't have the ability to open my phone, open the application and do all the things that are necessary in case you want to use the reporting app. In addition to that, we are now checking some opportunities to integrate to smart glasses and also for the public uh, safety employees in case they are coming, let's say, again, the Bataclan or the hyper they are trying to break into uh, a place, so they have it on the glasses and they will stream all the information back without doing anything, without touching with their hands. In addition to that, just in the United States, there is uh, expect, expected to be in 2020 46.2 million smart homes. And again, think about the fact that you are in your home and we all know about the Alexa that belongs to Amazon and you, all what you need to say, it's Alexa call 911. It's immediately, it will deliver all the information, totally transparent to the first responders by you saying just Alexa, please call 911 or Google call 911 or something like this. And it will deliver all the information again, transparently. As I said before, we believe that if you are not using something in your daily life, you won't use it in case of emergency. And Report is developing now many features that are good for people to use in a daily routine uh, um, uh, days. And we have many features. You can create your own personal group of guards that once you are initiating a call, they will receive it and they will get the, your exact location and, in, and the fact that you are now reporting to 911 and if you are part of community, so they will be able to come and help you. We have the follow me feature that if you have kids and they are coming back from school, for example, so you can, you, you can activate it and you can see exactly where they are. And if they are turning on their own uh, street or something like this, it will notify you or other, other of their friends. We have a social map that you can see exactly what's going on around you. And we are developing more and more features because we believe, again, that if you are not using something in your daily life, you will not remember to use it in case of emergency. Um, we have a very strong team and we have uh, investors and advisors that we are working with worldwide. As part of our team, you can find former Prime Minister Ehud Barak, who invested in the company $1.5 million. We have the former Secretary of Homeland Security of the US government, Michael Chertoff. And we have great people also from Europe and from Asia that are working with us in order to shape the future of public safety. Thank you very much.